Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the real grade Justice Gundam. Now this ride here is a blast from the past. This is an early real grade kit through and through. As far as I can see from the Gunpla wiki, this was the ninth ever full real grade release. So as far as I know, the first ever real grade I personally built was the Zeta Gundam and that was when it came out new. So this actually came out before I ever built a real grade and I've built a lot since and some before it, a whole lot after it. Now in 2021, there was such a unique design. Of course, this does build up onto that MS Joint 4 inner frame. So this can be built as a little inner frame right out of the box if you want to have a little bit of fun with it. But if you are following the instructions, you'll be building it piece by piece by piece. And that's exactly what I did with this. They build up so quickly. I just freshly built this right there and it didn't really take all that long. Now, I didn't put a whole lot of extra effort into this. Just two snips off the runner, one snip for anything on the inside. I did a little bit of pan lining in the vanity areas and I did color in the clear segments on the head with a blue sharpie. But I wish I used a little bit of a lighter blue sharpie because this is blue. But yeah, it still amazes me just how good these kits still look today and the justice right here is absolutely beautiful. Once you get everything cut out and snapped together, this is what you get inside of the box. That of course is the real grade Justice Gundam itself, it's massive and awesome backpack, the Fat Tomb 00. As for the equipment we get besides that, we get a shield and a beam rifle, both very nicely color separated, a pair of beam sabers. We have some beam boomerang effects here for using with the beam boomerangs up in the shoulders. We also have a little bit of a stand, four alternate hands as well as the two attached onto the Justice and that tiny little Athranzala himself. Well, I guess it's time to jump in and take a look at everything one by one, but first... This video was sponsored once again by those snack masters over at Boxu, a monthly snack box subscription service that delivers an original assortment of premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings. Boxu honors Japanese heritage by working with 100 plus year old family snack makers to deliver authentic Japanese exclusive snacks to your door. Every month you'll receive a box with a different theme so the snacks will always be different. So far we've seen the delicious seasons of Japan, the sweetness of Japanese summer fruits and the excitement of summer matsuri. And this month's theme is Moon Festival or Otsukimi celebrating the harvest moon, a real treat for gourmets who want to try some very unique Japanese snacks. This month's boxu is full of dark chocolate representing the night sky and circular food representing the moon. In the first round of Mecha Gaikotsu vs Boxu, there's buttery, crumbly black sesame cookies, real strawberries infused with dark chocolate, sweet and sticky lemon mochi, squishy soft kurumi walnut mochi, finished off with an intense and decadent rich baked chocolate cake. Round 2 brought the Matcha Baum Kuchen Eclipse. This was my number 3 favorite from this boxu as nothing beats the Japanese take on this decadent German cake. Two packs of what was my second favorite thing from this box, the addictive crispy spicy Ryu chili chips. And my number 1 from this box, Hachimitsu Kinako Mochi Puffs. Kinako is hands down my favorite Japanese flavor, so good. The final round of this box who brought rabbit tail cream filled green tea buns, huge corn flavored potato snack, salted black bitter, chocolate chinsuko cookies, and spicy chinsuko to go with your favorite beer. All finally washed down with a hoji cha latte, sweet caramel tasting but still distinctively Japanese. As usual, first time customers will receive the Seasons of Japan box, which takes you through Japan's four seasons while taking you through an absolutely epicurean journey across Japan. Use my code MECHATEN in the link down there in the description to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese subscription from Boxu. So jumping straight on into the aesthetics and there's the real great Justice Gundam out of the box snapped together with a little bit of panel lining and some blue up on that head camera. But besides that, this is what it will look like out of the box. As usual with the full 360 spin, I will throw up what the original art or the art from the series looks like up on the right. But I will mention just in case you don't know when it comes to real grades, this is what 
or at least I should say the design of this is what the Justice Gundam would look like if it existed in reality. That's why we've got a whole lot more detailed surfaces, lots of panel lining, and a whole ton of cool details and color separation. We've got the two-tone on the main color, that is two shades of that, what I can only really describe as salmony pink. The white is just one shade, and I think the navy blue is one shade as well, but we do have some nice gray popping through here and there. These kits visually have still stood the test of time. This looks fantastic. What else can I say? The real great justice does the justice justice. Let's get in a bit closer. So now jumping in a little bit closer to check out some of the detailing, popping in on that face, and like I already just said, these age so well. The face on the Justice right here looks perfect, threatening. The color separation around through the torso and everything looks great. We even got those seed variants of Vulcans, whatever they're called, in the chest there. And the panel lining and surface detailing on this is off the charts. Looks wise, without a single doubt, this is a 10 out of 10. I guess the only thing you could complain about a little bit is the fact that these older kits aren't under gated so you're gonna have to take a little bit of care while chopping them out cleaning them up to make sure you don't get some nubs on the surface but besides that this thing is an absolute beauty also without a single doubt these might be my favorite seed style feet right here those pointy almost night grieve looking boots those are some cool feet as some size comparisons there it is beside the real grade rx 78 2 the real grade strike one very, very dusty, real grade freedom. I don't have the master grade justice handy at the moment, so there is the freedom, which is around the same size. So now there's the real grade justice doing the tour of the shelves. First up, there it is on the Oryx 78 2 shelf. Next up, there it is on the Bill Divers Re Rising and Bill Divers shelf. Besides some main mobile suits, including the high grade freedom, besides some Universal Century main suits from big to small, and finally, there it is side by side with the real grade new Gundam, a titan amongst real grade Gundams. But anyway, let's move on to the accessories. So jumping quickly back to the beginning, there's the overview of absolutely everything that's in this box. Now let's go check it all out. So first up on everything, we're going to take a look at the backpack, which is the Fatum. The Justice right here doesn't really look, well, like the Justice without it, so we'll take a look at that. But before we attach to the back, this can be used as a Green Goblin style flight unit. But before I do that, in general when it comes to Gunpla, you do not have to use any kind of cement while putting it together, but in this sort of situation, I do recommend you do. A lot of the earlier real grades, some of the way the parts attach is a little bit on the wishy-washy side, so these can pop off really easy and they are a loss risk. So as for displaying this in flight, we do have an included base adapter in here which clips onto the bottom of the fat tomb. But I will mention, it does mention in the instructions that the action base that you use this with is one of these older ones right here. That is an action base too. I did try it with one of the newer ones, the hexagonal ones, and it will fit but it does strain the action base part, the action base adapter ever so slightly. So I'm going to stick with this one for the review. So once you've got it up on the base, you can flip these little segments for the feet backwards. The one on the left on mine is notoriously loose for some reason. Is yours if you have one? Drop it down there in the comments. I'd like to know if it's just this one or if they're all like that. Then just attach the feet on, push them back to clip them into place. And finally, there is the real great justice riding on the fat tomb, looking like it's something of a scientist itself. Attaching the backpack on is simple enough. I'm going to leave this part off before it drives me entirely insane. It just slots into the back. It takes a little bit of a push, which might knock off some parts like it did right here for me. But yeah, so is uh, the way of the early real grade. But yeah, once this is attached and when it's not attached as well, there's a whole lot of articulation here. That is the flipping out of the wings, rotation of the wings. Around the thrusters, we've got a lot going on. That's a flap up top, flap up bottom, a flap in the middle. And all of those verniers are on ball joints. We've got a pair of turrets that can rotate, cock up and down, the front beam cannon majiggers, those, well, those can move up and down too, and you can actually pull this outwards like so, which I should have done when it was standing up on a green goblin style, because then, well, it wouldn't have been so constipated looking, but you can do that. So when the backpack is attached, you can actually prop it up on the yellow sections of the wings here, so it can stand up fine with the backpack on, and if you want it all the way up, you best beware that V-fin. And then you can just clip it back oh, onto the action base like this and he's decapitated. But yeah, you can use it with an action base and uh, I should probably move on through this pretty quickly because I feel it greatly re re <laughs> reducing my life expectancy. 
As for the hands we've gotten here, we've got these fists we've seen since the beginning that have a weird kind of slot hole in them that you can't use for anything. A pair of original real grade style hands which have movable thumb and finger, as well as three connected fingers that can move together. And next up we've got two more right hands, one is for holding the beam rifle and the other is a widespread dynamic hand. Why they made both of these for the right hand only, I don't know. You think you'd have a beam rifle holding hand for the right hand and a widespread left hand for dynamic shooting poses, but hey, this is what we got. Swapping the hands is somewhat annoying for one main reason. When you pop off the hands, well, you lose a part. That is this square little segment here, this cuff kind of segment. This is only held in by the hands themselves, nothing else. Odd design. So moving on to the beam sabers now, and these are held in the real grade style hands, and honestly, I thought in recent years, I don't know if it's my old age or what, I was becoming a bit of a zen master and not getting annoyed by model kits, but uh, I forgot how bad these were. This thing is driving me fucking ballistic, and I'm not joking. Everything falls apart all the time. The fat tomb decapitates it. The goddamn arms fall off. The hands have to be sandwiched down with the wrist bits in annoying ways. This thing is driving me around the bend. So anyway, finally got them attached and there they are, a fairly standard set of beam sabers, not worth the effort. As is usually the case with the Justice, you can take one of the beam sabers and attach it onto the bottom of the other beam saber, and I was going to use the widespread open hand for the right hand for, you know, making it look cool until I realized what I would have to go through to change it, so I decided against it. And also, while I'm feeling a bit prickly while talking about this, uh, yeah, because these beam savers attach via a peg into the hand, that, well, doesn't fold away. When these are double attached like what you're seeing right here, that peg is always just sticking out like a spare prick on the back there. Oh yeah, that and it barely holds on. At this point, I remembered I forgot to mention the stickers. I was going to stick some on during the aesthetics part for this taking me so long, I'm not going to do it. So uh, there's a picture of what they look like. Again, these are nicely designed, but they are only real grade sticker style decals. Okay, bits just keep falling off, so I'm going to stick to my articulation rule right now. Even though it's not the articulation, I don't know if I'll make it that far. But that means if anything falls off, it's staying off because... I'm spending half my time reassembling this thing at this point. Again, cement this thing together. Anything that doesn't move, cement it. Even if it does move, you might as well cement it. Because if you don't cement it, it'll drive you demented. Okay, I'm going to try and do this in real time. I'm going to attach the uh, beam rifle and not go insane while doing so. So we've got a dedicated hand. Let's attach that on. Get that in. Oh, that's nice. That's nice because it is a actual fixed pose hand. This is, yeah, it's holding together quite well. Now we have to mess around with that cuff one more time. Oh, there it goes. I don't know where it's gone. Does that count? Does that count as having, you know, something falling off? I guess it kind of comes off by design. I don't know where it went. I don't care anymore. Anyway, that just attaches in just like so. And hey. There is no denying that is a fine looking beam rifle right there. We've got a clear piece up in the front for that sight and it is color separated very nicely with a lot of detail. Give that a little bit of a panel line and it'll be beautiful. Okay, shield, shield, time for the shield. The shield has a handle here that you can switch up and down by pulling it out and in. And the attachment point is one of these rotating guys right here. Ball joint in there, hinge and a peg. Let's see if I can get this on without going absolutely mad there is two attachment points okay odd anyway there it is attached on pop that into the hand like so and hey the shield isn't actually that bad pretty good okay because you're doing so well for me now justice i'm gonna give you back your v fin oh you're not getting that back now urged kill rising anyway we've got some beam boomerangs up in the shoulder okay okay i'm gonna attempt to uh Put this into the hand. Well, what, what's going to happen? Is this the right way? I don't. I don't care. I assume it is. Come on. There we go. Attached. Okay. Trying to put in that. Be oh. 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 And if your justice is having trouble standing up, which it most certainly will, you can also use this handy dandy included stick. They didn't give you a stand. They gave you a stick. You pop the action base stand bit on there, pop that on here. We've got a segment which attaches in here to stop it from flopping, which probably would have helped me out a little bit earlier on, actually. Okay, so that was my mistake, Justice, so I'm gonna give you your V-Fin back. Oh! Oh! Girl. But yeah, now we've got a little bit of a monopod back there to... Ooh! Glass table, I'm gonna blame the glass table for that one. 
So I don't know why I do this to myself, but I'm actually gonna go through with the articulation on this, even though it is driving me around the bend. I recommend pulling off all the limbs on this and top coating it just to make sure everything holds a little better because things just keep flopping off. Make sure to cement the knees, the V-fin. Besides that, I think everything's been holding up okay so far, but uh, here we go. I don't know if there's more to the neck than just the ball joint, but that's all I'm getting from this. The head can move around in a ball joint and the back of the head's pressure is what holds the head on and it doesn't do it very good job of that, honestly. The arm can move up and down at the shoulder. There's a little bit, actually a lot of movement to the front right there. 360 spin, try to be gentle. Shoulder armor can move independently to the arm. There's the arm, all the way up. Oh, I'm never putting, I'm not putting that back on. We've got a full spin at the upper arm. A two point bend at the elbow, which is quite nice. To make it nicer and even more delicate, there is an armor sliding gimmick here. So it goes from there to there, like so. The wrist on the real great hand is a ball joint and a bit of a hinge. I'm not going to mess with that too much. The ab crunch is very little. It seems to be at the waist unit. There's a side to side rotation. Feels jank. Head back on because it just doesn't look right without it. Front skirting can move up like so. A little bit of up and down to the side skirting. Not a lot. It can pull forward a little bit, but again, not a lot. And we've got a spongy premium butt flap that kind of doesn't really do a whole lot of anything. There's a locking mechanism inside the hips which allows the legs to swing forward but I've been messing with this for 10 minutes and honestly I feel like I'd have to disassemble it to actually get this to move so moving on. As for the kicks there it is all the way up to the front. You can drop the hips so you could probably get more out of that. There it is out to the back. There goes the knee. All the way out. Decent splits. We've got the full rotation. Um, over this. There is the bend at the knee, not too bad, that's holding together. As of the ankle, there it is, all the way to the front, we've got a bending foot. All the way to the back, not too bad, side to side pivot is decent, and honestly, that's it for the review right there. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos, including those of you who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Van Fon, Sean T, Mr. Winter, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kuglock, Global Frequency Studios, Forseti, Caleb Engelhart, and Bakito Official.